We've seen plenty of 4X games that try to tackle the whole scope of human history or our distant future among the stars, but Old World zooms in both on time and space, creating what is still a suitably epic story based exclusively around the ancient Mediterranean. In most ways, it benefits from this narrower focus, telling more intimate and less abstract stories about human society than its ancestors in the Civilization series could. At the same time, it manages to feel a fair bit more complicated and unwieldy in the process, at least at first. Old World is like a postgraduate program for players who already have a bachelor's degree in Sid Meier's Civilization. Despite covering a much smaller slice of history, it takes the Civ template as a starting point and layers a lot of new mechanics on top of it. And for the most part, they're pretty interesting twists, but they're often presented in ways that aren't immediately elegant or approachable. The most prominent of these is a system of named characters and aristocratic families which adds a sort of Crusader King's light dynamic to your internal and international politics. One issue I always had with the Civilization series was that you sprinted through the ages so quickly that a lot of relatable human aspects of history could get lost in the mix. With each turn representing a year or a half year in Old World, and leaders who grow old and die in realistic time frames, I really got to know and develop feelings for the various generals and court functionaries through scripted events and decisions. In my first game as the Macedonian Greeks, Alexander was blinded in a military training exercise as a child, and went on to be a wise administrator rather than a ravenous conqueror. His grandson would forge a peace with the Gauls by marrying one of their tattooed warriors, but he upset some of the more xenophobic nobles in the process. This can be a lot to get your head around, and while there's a decent tutorial and a nested tooltip system, the UI didn't do me a lot of favors there. It likes to present information in a very dense, text-heavy way that seems afraid to cover up too much of the map, even when doing so could have given each detail some much-needed breathing room and improved readability by a lot. I found myself constantly wishing for proper character screens like in Crusader Kings 2 and 3, instead of the cramped little frames we got. Making more use of icons or collapsible info panes, rather than assaulting us with so much plain text per tooltip at once, would have gone a long way as well. The other major departure from Civilization is a resource called Orders, which determines how much your Civilization can do in a given turn. While individual units still have a movement range and action limit, you can run out of Orders and not be able to use all of them. So a very spread out Empire without enough administrative buildings might find that they have to choose between giving Orders to their troops at home to put down a rebellion, or maneuvering against a rival in a foreign war. You often can't do it all, and deciding where to spend your attention and what to ignore is commonly an interesting decision. Overall, I liked the way this allowed smaller, tall empires to compete with sprawling and inefficient ones, and modeled the difficulties of commanding a vast ancient state. But it is also one more resource to juggle on top of all of the usual ones you'd expect in Civ, so at the same time, it contributes to the increased complexity I mentioned earlier. While the menus may get overly busy, the map looks excellent and presents a lot of useful information at a glance. It might not be quite as high def as Civ 6 or the upcoming Humankind, but the units and buildings are a bit less exaggerated and stylized, so I feel more like I'm looking at a real place and not a game board, and that's a pretty big deal for me. On the other hand, the world generation looks a little bit off sometimes. I always seem to spawn near a bunch of volcanoes regardless of my set and the placement of eco-regions like deserts can feel slightly arbitrary. But if you don't want to leave things up to chance, there are also handcrafted maps of the Mediterranean and the Middle East with historical start locations. The wars you'll fight across these maps are definitely a highlight of Old World, and unlike the other new features, they add a lot of depth without adding much complexity. Axemen have a cleave that can deal reduced damage to anyone close to their primary target. Simple. <laughs> 
Cavalry get to attack again if they kill a unit. Spearmen are the only guys that can stop cavalry in their tracks, as mounted units normally ignore zone of control rules. None of these abilities require multiple paragraphs of text to understand or come with an armload of edge cases, but the possibilities for using them in concert are great, much like a game of chess. And the AI is generally much more capable of understanding and employing those ideas than anything I've seen in Civ 6, even after its years of patches. Old World can be vexing at first, given how much more there is to manage on top of the usual 4x concerns we've gotten used to in the past decade or so. And the UI can feel cluttered as you're trying to piece it all together. But crucially, none of that added complexity comes without added rewards. The richness and human element that mortal characters and noble families bring is well worth coming to grips with all of the extra mechanics they introduce. Limiting your ability to give orders not only cuts down on long turn times in the late game, but opens up new strategies for playing tall or making the most of a less than great start position. It's a fine balancing act, and while Old World doesn't really become a Civ killer, I don't think it's trying to be one. For those who have the patience to master it, it's a satisfying and deep 4x that could generate interesting stories for ages to come. For more, check out our reviews of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormground and Iron Harvest Operation Eagle. And for everything else, stick with IGN.